studio where I have a little corner with a bunch of knitting stuff. Uh, but since I've started to get into fiber crafts a little bit more, it's almost like I need another room right now. I'm sure a bunch of you out there can relate when it comes to our crafts. I feel like there's a lot of overlap and we do sewing and quilting and crochet and knitting and spinning. We do a bunch of other things. So, um, let me know in the chat box below where you are tuning in from. I'm coming to y'all from North Central Florida, where it's starting to cool off a little just at night and in the mornings. The rest of the day, it's still piping hot here in Florida. All right, so welcome everybody. I love that some of you are on here. If you are just tuning in, I post instructional video tutorials on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel, and I share a lot of what is going on in our lives and our business on uh, the Crafty Gemini Facebook page. And so if you're just tuning in, this is going to be different to my other live streaming events because this is all about fiber. And by fiber, I mean all the wooly things, okay? Not just wool, but... I do love wool. Um, and we, re we recently added two sheep to our homestead. And so I am on the schedule with a traveling shearer who's going to come in January to shear the sheep. And then I haven't decided yet if I'm going to take it to a mill and have them do all the cleaning and scouring and processing of the, the fleece, or if I want to venture and maybe try to do it myself, probably a smaller chunk because they can be quite big and it's a lot of work. So we'll see what we end up doing with that, but I'll definitely be filming some videos when we get to that stage because our sheep are not yet old enough, right? They're not even, I don't know, maybe they're seven or eight months old now. So in January, they're going to be sheared for the first time. All right, so let's say hi to a couple of friends here who I see tuning in. All right, hi, Anna. She is tuning in from Sweden. That is amazing. Uh, let's see. Hi, Linda. Or, or Lynn's tuning in from Connecticut. Hi, Lisette, tuning in from Canada. Hey, girl. Uh, yeah, Lindy says not fiber for your belly. Definitely not fiber for your belly. We're talking fiber yarny stuff. And so as we go through and add on more of these live Fiber Friday episodes, I feel like I'm going to maybe work on a type of outline of what we find that works best for y'all, for me, what I want to share and break it up so that I make sure that I am covering hand knitting, circular sock machine knitting, crochet, spinning, what else? dyeing, dyeing fiber, dyeing yarn, all that kind of stuff. So I have a little outline for me today for the first one, but I'm going to kind of bounce in from the chat. So if you're not here for the chit chatter and the show and tell, you probably won't like Fiber Fridays. <laughs> this is not a tutorial. Uh, just a heads up. Hi, Avril tuning in from Trinidad and Tobago. And Bertie from Nova Scotia. We got some Canadian friends in the house. Hey, Margaret, tuning in from Arizona. And Gail, hey, she says, I'm so excited. Well, I'm so excited to hear that. Oh, I have Nellie tuning in from Queens, New York. Queens. I was born in Queens. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I want to tell y'all is that if you will, if you enjoy the content that I'm going to cover in Fiber Fridays and you want to hear more about my spinning adventures and what kit boxes, what new patterns we're releasing, everything having to do with knitting and crocheting type of stuff, uh, you definitely want to sign up for our email list. We have an email list that is just for fiber crafts. So if you're on my regular email list and you're so a sew, uh, sewist and a quilter, this is going to be a different one so that I make sure that I don't send spinning stuff to quilters, right? If they don't care to hear about me spinning yarn or want to see what I'm what what I'm dying or what we're selling, what projects, what kits, I don't want to be, you know, sending stuff to people who are basically not interested. So if you are interested in fiber craft stuff only, we have a link in the description box and we're also putting it in the chat box here for you all to add your email. It's just a free email list, but that way I can best communicate with you all. And one of the things I'm going to be doing in the coming week is sending out a feedback survey. So the way that this is coming about this Fiber Fridays is that I've done crochet tutorials on my YouTube channel. I've done knitting tutorials, hand knitting and even arm knitting knitting tutorials on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel, but it's been years, okay, since I've done that. So now that our business is growing, we are ready to grow this fiber side of our business as well, and I'm so excited because I've hired new people, so I don't have to do everything by myself. So I have a new assistant, I have some tech editors on board who are helping me with knitting, with crochet patterns that we're designing, all that stuff. So if you are ready to come along with that, make sure that you're on the fiber crafts only list. Okay. Oh, Birdie says, I've been watching your videos for years. I'm so glad to hear it. Thanks for tuning back in for fiber Friday. All right. So let's get started. Aside from signing up for the email list, let's start off with some finished 
projects, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna show you here are gonna be some socks. Some of y'all have been asking me whenever I post on Instagram stories and on my Facebook page if I am going to be doing any tutorials on my circular sock knitting machine. So I have a circular sock knitting machine. It is an Erlbacher Gearheart Speedster, and I knit these little shorty socks on it. Uh, sometimes people wonder, they say, uh, because I feel like the most of the times when you see somebody using a circular sock machine, you'll see them crank out a tube. There's a lot of circular sock machine knitters who are offering this as a service where like you mail them the skein or they provide one that you choose. Um, you can find people selling these tubes and stuff on Etsy. And um, then they crank out a tube and they tell you whatever the width is. And when you get this, something like this, then you would just... Uh, put in afterthought heels, afterthought toes, and afterthought cuffs if you wanted to. So it's like an easy way to just crank out the stockinette portion of a sock, and then you would go in and add any of the shaped areas. So I just kind of wanted to show you all that because my sock machine is all the way over there. It's not, it's, it, it's heavy. <laughs> it's not like something I could just lift up, okay? It's an Earl Bacher Gerhardt Speedster. If you type in Speedster sock machine, it will be the first thing that pops up. Now, they're definitely not cheap, but if you'd like to see some tutorials or maybe on one of these Fiber Fridays, you want me to kind of just go through and do a demo on it, let me know that in the chat box below. That's definitely something I'll be asking also in our feedback survey that we'll be sending out later um, next week so that I can know exactly how to prep for these Fiber Friday episodes, okay? So that's what that would be. But when you go one step up and learn how to shape stuff on the sock machine, these socks were completely done on the circular sock machine. So I did um, the, the little, uh, l cuff. it's like a cuff, but it's not a ribbing cuff, the little cuff, and I followed a pattern uh, that Jamie Mayfield has. It's a free CSM pattern, circular sock machine. CSM is what we call it in like all the Facebook groups and online. And then you hang the hem so it's finished. It's not like a raw edge because it's not ribbing. So you pick up stitches from one row to the other for whatever the little height of the mini shorty sock is. And then I work a little bit for the leg. Then I do the heel. Then I work the foot. And then I do the toe. So these were all completely done. So that was one pair I made for myself. And this is another pair, another fun, darker color, but I love them. Aren't they cute? So another pair of shorty socks. I live in Florida. Yes, I know I don't need wool socks in Florida. But shorty socks, yeah, I can definitely wear those with sneakers, okay? Um, Becky's asking skinny yarn. Yeah, that's, this is all sock weight yarn. I do have some friends that crank out the tubes and make their socks on the same circular sock machine and they use DK weight yarn. I haven't ventured there yet because I'm really not trying to mess with the tension on my machine. I'm trying to uh, kind of keep everything as it is because there is a huge and do you know what I mean by huge learning curve on that sock machine thing because you have to understand all the mechanics of all the little latches they open then as they go down they close it that thing is like it's it's whole nother world okay um, <laughs> so yes uh, Bernadine hi Miss Bernadine she's asking about the sock machine it's called a um, Earl Bacher Gearheart a speedster okay uh, okay Let's see. Oh, Becky says she loves those dark ones. Me too. Now, I do have an almost finished object here I wanted to share with y'all, and these are socks. And some people think, oh, well, if you have a sock machine, you don't hand knit socks. You know, I don't have a sock machine. I actually like to do both. They're two totally different things, okay? So this is a pair of socks that are, if my friend Jana is watching, Jana, don't judge me. Um, <laughs> this is all I need to finish, and I haven't done it the toe. Uh, these I hand knit and this yarn I actually hand dyed myself um, last year, year before. So these were hand knit and these have, you know, the ribbing, then a rib portion for the leg. And then uh, we did the heel flap, all that, like the full, full, real hand knit sock. So yes, I do need to finish the toe on this one, but then I'll be done. Uh, so yeah, you can kind of see the difference. I mean, of course, you can hand knit any type of sock, and I can um, machine knit a super taller sock, too, if I wanted to, but I do like them both. They're different. These obviously take longer, so some of you sock knitters may be thinking, well, if you have a sock machine, why wouldn't you always use it? I kind of like to knit socks. It's like fine yarn. You can. It's such a small project. I can keep it in a, in a project bag, take it with me anywhere, and here I'll show you all the yarn that I dyed. I think it worked up so pretty. And actually, I will, look at me, I'm like holding it. Can y'all see it here? <laughs> so many fun, fun colors. So 
that is something else that we are working on, my team and I. So as we work on new patterns for both knitting and crochet, we are definitely going to be hosting knit alongs, crochet alongs, putting together kits where y'all can um, sign up and follow along with that. So that's that. Another finished object that I have is actually a new pattern that is not, it's new, but it's not out yet. I still have some more testers testing it. This thing has been in the works for years now. So I'm kind of excited to finally get it out. And I actually have two samples that I've made in hand dyed yarn. This is my Constanza shawl. Isn't that pretty? I think I dyed this last year or last year this game. It has all these pinks and blues and then shades of purples. There's some uh, green speckles and spots where the blue hits the yellow and then there's some yellow and I'm obsessed. I'm mad that I only um, dyed one skein of this. But you can see this is a shawl that's done. It's super beginner friendly. And so this one will probably kit up and do a whole knit along because it is a fun way for beginners to make a cool little project that only takes one skein of yarn and uh, features sock weight yarn, which is, you know, thin. When I first started knitting, I was like, I will never knit fingering weight yarn. It feels like it's so thin. It's like you're knitting with thread, but it's really not. It's really not. Then you get over it. <clears throat> Let's see. Maria from Puerto Rico is asking, is it easy for a crocheter to learn to knit? So actually my answer to that, and that's a great question. Uh, I would say yes. I've been crocheting since I was nine years old and I didn't learn how to knit till I was in my 30s. So I, a lot of times you'll hear people say, well, if you learn to crochet first, then you'll probably be a continental knitter because in, in that style of hand knitting, you also tension um, the yarn in your left hand. And I actually found it to be complete the, the complete opposite because in crochet, we're used to having that hook on the end. So you can turn and manipulate it, but you know that if you bring it out in a way that the yarn is caught on the hook, it doesn't really matter how you're holding it because the hook is pulling it out for you. Whereas in knitting, there is no hook on the end. So as you try to do the same type of movements that you do in crochet, you're like, yeah, it's sliding off. Why is it not coming along for the ride? Because there is no hook. So I started off with the English style or American style of knitting where they call it throwing, um, where you tension the yarn in your right hand. And I found that to be easier. So if you're a crocheter and you feel like you've had, either you feel like you cannot knit, learn how to knit or you've had failed attempts, definitely make sure that you add your email to our fiber crafts only email list. We put it in the description box of the video. It's in the chat box for you too. And that way you will be in the loop of when I start doing my knit alongs and more tutorials, okay? Hi, Annette, thanks for tuning in and no worries. Um, Nancy's asking, do we need a knitting machine for this series? No, you absolutely do not, no way. Uh, you can just follow along and that way if I'm doing a crochet project or a crochet along or we have some type of project kit with a video course that comes along with it, if you wanna do it, you can sign up for that. If you wanna wait for a knitting one, you can do a knitting one. And, and it's kinda of gonna be just me sharing a bunch of stuff that has to do with fiber, okay? Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, that's awesome. We got cool crafty creations in the house. She says, I'm a crochet fiber artist. That's amazing. Awesome. All right. Uh, Jackie B says, I learned to knit at eight years old and taught myself to crochet in my 20s. Look at that, Jackie. So you're basically almost the backwards of me. But learning what I did going from crochet to then learning how to knit later on, I think it really helped me when I was teaching my kids how to knit and crochet. And my daughter hates everything. She doesn't like to crochet or she doesn't like to knit, but she can, she has the skills. My son does not like to crochet, but he likes to knit. So it just kind of depends. I feel like all these hands-on fiber crafts just work a different part of your brain. Like I said recently in a post, I picked up a spinning wheel because we got sheep, right? So when I get the sheep sheared and we use the wool and stuff like that, I was like, I might as well learn how to spin. And so I always thought that spinning was something that knitters and crocheters did because they wanted to like super slow down the process or have all the control over the yarn they were going to use in their project. And I don't think that that's the case anymore. When I spin, it is literally, it's like, I don't even care what yarn I make, I just want to spin. So it's about the process, more so the finished project. And so I like that with these fiber crafts, I can do that. Typically in sewing and quilting for me, it's like you're making something cause you're gonna wear it. You're making something cause you need a new bag. You're making a quilt cause you gotta gift the quilt. So for me, the yarn stuff, it's like even if I don't use it in a project, 
I, I still want to make it. I still want to diet. I still want to play with it. Okay. Hi, Tina. Thanks for tuning in. She says, hi, I'm so glad I found this. Well, I am glad that you are here too. If you're just tuning in, I'm Vanessa, the crafty Gemini, and this is my first episode of Fiber Fridays, where the first Friday of every month, I will be here on the crafty Gemini Facebook page and the crafty Gemini YouTube channel going live to talk about all things fiber. So we were just showing some uh, finished objects and I was showing y'all some uh, shorty socks that I cranked out on my circular sock knitting machine. Then we were talking about my shawl. I still have some testers testing it, the Constanza shawl, and you can look for it if you can spell Constanza, and uh, on Instagram, because a lot of my testers have already, since April, been sharing pictures, works in progress of their shawl, so that's one, and then I have, this is the first one that I did when I was designing it, more muted colors, but still like these blues, aquas, and I love speckled yarns. I know, I know. They've been around for a minute, but I'm, I'm still obsessed with speckled yarns because, you know, in my sewing, I always say like, you know, I love a pop of color. In yarn, it's like I get all the pops of color, okay? So anyways, you can see how drapey the shawl is. It's a nice, decent size, uh, and it only takes one skein of yarn. So like one skein of sock fingering weight yarn, and I am about to sneeze. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> like my daughter, ah! Oh, it went away. Okay, let me grab a sip. I still feel like I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> my husband's holding his breath like, oh, here it goes. Okay, so anyways, the Constanza shawl, uh, we will probably release this with like a video course. That way I can do some, you know, hand holding the same way that I like to teach my sewing and quilting. So for knitters, and this is a beginner friendly project. All you need to know how to do is knit. And then I'll show you a decrease and an increased stitch. And that's it. And a yarn over. But, I mean, you're not even doing a stitch. You're just literally putting yarn over your needle. So anyways, a great little project. And that will be coming soon. So that's the other finished object that I had. All right. Hi, Mal, but thanks for tuning in. I'm glad you're watching live too. Tamara, thanks so much. She says, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, so I'm really happy with these. And for Florida, this is like the perfect thing. But for the rest of y'all that are in freezing places... A nice little fall or spring shawl, right? Okay, next thing I have on my list. Um, yeah, so I was going to talk a little bit about patterns. I'm going to show you a sneak peek of this one. It's not yet to the testers, but I did have a little bit of yarn left, so I went ahead and made, made a sample in the kid size. And this is a little cowl for a child. And this pattern is going to be released in two sizes, a child size and an adult size. Um, once I send it to the testers, obviously I'll have more pictures and stuff, but I was just working out everything. Uh, this is a great beginner project because you don't need that much yarn and all we're doing is knitting and purling. So if you're just going to be starting into or getting into knitting and you're still trying to practice and get your tension looking decent and remembering it when you're knitting and when you're purling and, you know, where the yarn has to be in the front or the back as you're doing each stitch, this will be a good one too. But this is another um, skein or another yarn that I dyed. I love the way that that pooling, the purple pooling looks. And it's like a checkerboard design. So super simple, good beginner project. And that one's already blocked. So a good size. All right. Oh, awesome. Hi, Julie. She says she's a beginning knitter and she wants to learn to crochet, but probably uh, should make myself learn the purl stitch so that you can do my washcloth pattern. Yes, absolutely. So I do have a free crochet washcloth pattern on my YouTube channel and also a free knitting wa knitted washcloth uh, pattern on my YouTube channel. We sold kits for those last year. We sold out multiple times. Those did, those did really well. And so that's part of stuff. So if you're looking for either one of those patterns, all you got to do is do a quick search on YouTube and type in Crafty Gemini Washcloth Crochet or Crafty Gemini Washcloth um, Knitting, and they'll pop right up for you. Okay. Oh, thanks, Julie. She says the shawl is super cute. I'm glad you like it. I wear it. Some of y'all probably have seen me. When I used to travel in another life years ago, I would wear it. I get so excited when I was going to a cooler place and like, yay, I can wear my shawl. <laughs> okay. So I recently bought a Shacked Ladybug spinning wheel, okay? And I signed up for a, a class with a local spinner who's everybody like in the Hand Weavers Guild here highly recommended her. Hi, Ginger. Uh, and so I signed up for a class with Ginger so she can show me and teach me how to spin, right? Uh, I've watched a ton of videos, but it's always good to have somebody who was even a commercial spinner right there telling you, okay, do this. Now, you know, feed it in. You're holding it too long, way too much twist. Feed it in, whatever. Helping me get all that tension stuff done. I am so excited because after I took the regular like learn to spin knit, uh, spin class with Ginger, I booked another class with her so she can teach me how to ply. 
And when I tell y'all I am so excited about my first applied yarn, is this not the coolest thing ever? I know some people are like, what do you use that bulky stuff for? But since I joined uh, Knit Collage's uh, Spring uh, Knit Along, they sell all these super fluffy, big, puffy uh, yarns, and I totally got into it. So the fact that I was able to, look at this. It's rainbow colored superwash merino that's 90% superwash merino wool and 10% blue stellina. So it has flecks of um, like metallic <laughs> glitter and shine in it. And then I did the skinnier yarn that's around it and kind of cinches it up and makes the, the puffier areas puff is, um, what was this? Polworth and silk. So I'm obsessed. And I got a good bit. There's like, I don't know, 119 grams. I'm not sure what I'm going to make with it. Yep, go ahead and um, refresh. They're saying that it's buffering. It's back on. Okay, great. Sorry about that technology. Okay, so anyways, I'm super excited. This is my first plied yarn that I whipped up. And then I started um, spinning up a couple more bobbins. You can see this is a lot thinner than what I than the puffy uh, rainbow one that I did here. So obviously the more you practice, the easier it becomes to be more consistently thin. So these two are uh, Blue Face Lester, so BFL and Silk, super soft, super shiny to work up. And so I spun these two bobbins. And I don't know if I wanna apply them, the two together because they're the same, or if I want to spin another bobbin of like a white and then make it like a, you know, like a marled mix of the white and these colors. But y'all know I love these jewel tones, these wine color, copper, pumpkin-y. I love all that stuff. So I'm excited about those. And this is my Lazy Kate here that has a couple more bobbins that I spun. So yeah, I'm currently obsessed with spinning. It's so fun. And what I have found is that, like I mentioned earlier, even if I don't want to use the yarn itself in something, I just want to spin the yarn. And, and that's, you know, taking it from fluff to actual yarn is so much fun. But what I have found is when I don't want to think about numbers and patterns and making sure that I'm knitting five and purling three and switching this and after the third stitch yarn over, when I'm not trying to think and I just want to sit down at night with a cup of tea, spinning is the thing I'm going to <laughs> because I don't have to think. I can just grab the fluff and spin. All right. Oh, Susan says her grandma used to spin yarn. That is awesome. My mom says one of my great, great, my great grandmothers used to um, spin cotton for thread. I'm like, whoa, super, super thin. And every time I post something about the spinning yarn, somebody asks me, have you ever spun cotton before? And I have not, not yet. I'm, I'm into the wools and the fluffies and the glittery and the fun stuff so far. We'll see if I get into like more functional, you know, practical stuff that I can use the, the cotton yarn for something else. Okay, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Pamela says technology and mercury and retrograde. <laughs> Till October 18th. Okay. Um, Mona says she's been knitting and crocheting since she was 10. That is awesome. <laughs> okay. Next thing. Let's see. Boom, boom. I covered that. I covered that. I wanted to share a book with y'all. And what I'm going to try to do with the Fiber Fridays is share one or two books each time. I know for those of you that are crocheters, you're probably like, boo, where's the crochet stuff? Right now, I have a crochet tech editor helping me work on a crocheted shawl pattern so that, you know, when we release the knitted Constanza shawl, we will also have a crocheted version of it. So just know that I am going to be working on both things as we go along with the different fiber Fridays and fiber, or excuse me, knit alongs and crochet alongs. It won't just all be knitting, but a little bit of everything because I like to dabble in all the things. Okay. So the book I wanted to talk about a little bit uh, today and to share with you is called Knitting Without Tears. If you knit, you probably own this book. It's by Elizabeth Zimmerman, and because I learned to knit in my 30s, I never like grabbed a book and learned, uh, you know, to knit. It was just like pull up Craftsy or pull up a YouTube video and watch something and learn, right? And so I've been listening to a lot of knitting podcasts here on YouTube, and everybody, whenever they get that beginner question, you know, what resources do you recommend so I can learn to knit? Is this book? So I was like, well, let me buy it. It's a. Pr I, I hate reading. I went to law school. Yes, I know. I still hate reading, but I will read if I'm reading instructions, <laughs> if I'm reading a recipe or if I'm reading a resource book that is giving me information that I want and need, I will read. Otherwise, no, 
I don't read. So this book does have a ton of information. It's actually like there's even places where you stop and giggle to yourself because her way of writing is hilarious and it's really good. However, for those of you that are the more modern learners these days and you need visual tutorials, you know, video, this is probably not going to be it because it's literally all just in black and white. So there are like little illustrations of kind of showing you where the needle would go, where the stitch is. But as far as the way that she breaks it down, it's super straightforward. It's a small read. And I think, I mean, obviously I know how to knit, but I think it's a good little resource to have on hand. She even has like different uh, patterns in here where she basically is giving you a recipe of like, do this, do that. This will yield you this sweater that's 40 inches wide or whatever it may be. And so they're good to even just practice on if you're a beginner and getting started. Okay. Um, Anne says, I love that book. I Everybody mentioned Elizabeth Zimmerman books. I'm actually trying to get my hand on a couple other ones too that she wrote. So I just, I say I hate reading, but like, all the books back here, but they're all read and tell me something on how to do something books. Um, otherwise I don't. Okay. <laughs> uh, I use more of a mathy brain for stuff. Okay. Let's see. Oh, Elizabeth says great book. Yes. Yeah. So I wanted to share that with you because I know sometimes beginners and there's people that don't do as well with the video tutorials and you might be looking for a book. So I think this would be a good one to get your hands on. Of course, there's so many. I have so many, but I'm going to try to share at least one to two books every time um, I come on for Fiber Friday. So that's something else, you know, that you can look at, check with your local library if you want to check it out and see if it's something that you want to purchase or whatever. Okay. Uh... Great. I see some of you crochet, some of you knit. Go ahead right now and let's take a moment. Leave me a comment in the chat box, whether on Facebook or on YouTube, and tell me what types of projects or kits or knit alongs, crochet alongs, and that kind of stuff do you want to see from me uh, now that I am delegating work to other employees so that I can focus a little bit more on growing this yarn and fiber side of our business. So I want to put together kits and the video courses and just put together an entire bundle so that we can get together, you know, troubleshoot, answer questions, similar to what I do with my sewing and quilting classes. But I'm curious to hear from y'all. And if you are, here's the name of the book again, Angie. It is called Knitting Without Tears. Okay. So I want to hear from you. Also, go ahead and use the link to sign up for our email list that's just for fiber crafts. It's in the chat box below. It's also underneath this video if you're on YouTube. And uh, we will send out an email co this coming week, like a more of a feedback survey so that I can basically tailor everything that we're going to be doing here with the business uh, to, you know, what it is that you all want. Okay? So that's what we're working on. Now... I just was going to show y'all. Did I show this already? Oh, hello. Work in progress. I have a work in progress here that has been a work in progress since 2019. Don't judge me. This is a sweater that I started in Houston. My friend Stacy at her house. I flew over there. We went to what was it? Houston Fiber Festival that year. And I bought this yarn from an independent or indie dyer. And I bought all the skeins that she had of this amazing gray speckled DK weight yarn. Like I said, this was years ago and I still like speckled. Okay, so this is the front. <laughs> I've done a lot. I literally did most of this in three weeks back in June of 2019. Um, I got stuck on some part here with the short rows, so I've gone past that. And now I need to like separate something and then pick up on the shoulder ribbing or something like that. And so I haven't done that yet, but that's kind of where I am. So this is the back. It's done in reverse stockinette. So you basically are doing it in um, like you're knitting most of the way, but it's worn inside out so that you're looking at the pearl side on the back, which is kind of cool. So yeah, like I, I'm looking at it now. I'm like, you're almost done. Just finish it. But you know how that is. <laughs> Anyways, that is the sweater that I'm working on. Maybe this winter I'll be able to wear it two years later. Uh, but that is, the pattern for that is called The Weekender by Andrea Maury of Drea Renee Knits. Super popular um, knitwear designer. And let me see. It's a paid for pattern. You can get it on Ravelry. But let me see if there's a full picture here so you can see it. Probably not. The images are kind of small, but 
I think you can kind of see that though. Super cute. This thing has been made, I don't know, maybe hundreds of thousands of times. It has, it's like somebody talks about the weekender and everybody on the whole planet that knits knows exactly what pattern it is. So yes, there it is. <laughs> I'm working on that. I am trying to make more progress on it and I will. This is the year where I'm like, okay, start cranking out the stuff. I'm spinning. I have sheep. Hello. I need to use up this wool, right? Now let's see. Okay, great. Some of you are asking about knitting uh, easy socks. Some of you want a market tote, hat, scarves, poncho, shawls. Sounds like my kind of stuff. I, I, I don't like spending time picking out yarn. So unless I can grab the exact amount and go with it, uh, I know like in quilting, some of you love to just spend a ton of time picking out your fabrics. I don't. I literally am like, I don't care if it matches. I just want to start the project. And I feel like that carries over to me for knitting too. So these ones, I remember when I dyed these skeins or these hanks, I dyed two of them on purpose. Not that I know what I was going to make with it, but I was like, I'm going to be mad if I only have one and uh, I need more to make whatever it is that I'm going to decide to make in the future because I don't know what I'm going to make with it. It's the same way I buy fabric. I buy fabric that I like, that looks cute, and I have no idea what I'm going to use it in. So you see how all that carries over to the other crafts. Let me know if you're the same. Okay, one other thing that we are doing is that for whoever is signed up for our email list, we are going to pick two emails at random, and I'm gonna give it a couple more days, that way for those of you that maybe can't watch this whole live or couldn't tune in live if you're watching the recording, that way you still have a couple days to uh, get in on our Fiber Crafts only email list. And we're going to pick two emails from there. We'll just send you out an email letting you know, hey, you're the giveaway winner. And we're going to put a box together of some goodies. Now, don't worry if you knit or crochet because there's going to be both knitting and crochet stuff and yarn, of course, in the little giveaway kit boxes. So the only way to enter is if you're on our email list. And of course, if you want to keep hearing about my fiber crafts and projects and whatever we have going on. Okay. Uh... Yes, so, so it was somebody asking what a cowl is. Becky was asking, what is a cowl? So a cowl is this. It's just like a tube scarf that you put. This is the kid's size. I don't want to stretch it out. But you put it over your head, and it just stays there. Some of them are like baggier and looser. Some are meant to be worn higher up and cozier, closer to the face. But that's what a cowl is, okay? Donna says, I'm the same way, too. People always ask, what are you going to make? <laughs> she says, I don't know, but it'll come to me someday. Yeah, I learned that real quick. Working at Joanne Fabrics when I was back in law school, you never ask a quilter when they come up with the fabric to cut it at the table. You never ask, what are you making? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. I just like the fabric. Uh, sometimes people had projects in mind, you know, but I was like, I feel you because I would just collect a yard, half a yard, which sometimes you end up stuck because... Then you like the fabric, but you don't have enough to make the project, and then you can't go back and get it. So sometimes that comes back to bite us, but that's, that's how I am both with yarn and with fabric. All right. Rebecca says, I bought a new house to house my yarn and fabric. <laughs> the struggle is real. All right. Oh, and H. Bailey says, I have tons of yarn without a single idea of what to make. Well, then that is going to be good because I think if you stick around, add yourself to the email list and keep tuning in to these Fiber Fridays. Remember, I'm going to be here live chatting about all things yarn and fibery stuff uh, on the first Friday of every month at 7 p.m. Eastern. So because I have a lot of parts moving in the background, we have tech editors for knitting, crochet. We're going to have a new pattern and stuff. I'm excited for the next Fiber Friday because it'll be a month from now, and I'm definitely going to have an update for y'all of what's next, what's going on, and what we have for you, okay? Okay. Oh, Gail says to sign her up. She can't find the link. Can we put the link again in the chat box real quick? And then um, <laughs> Lizette says, yeah, the struggle is so real. What are you working on, Lizette? All right. And so, again... To enter the giveaway, just be on the email list by the end of the weekend. So let's say Sunday night at midnight, we're going to pick two emails. We'll contact you, let you know, hey, you won. And uh, I'm going to put together two little bundle boxes with like knitting needles, crochet hooks, and then yarn and, and little cutesy stuff. It'll be a good bundle. All right. Um... Okay, I don't see any specific <laughs> I don't see any specific questions for me, but thank you all for the feedback. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, I, I guess I'll give it another minute and see if I have any questions or anything specific people want me to talk about, especially for the next one. My handy quilter mug. Handy quilter. I like big mugs. Uh, hi, Margie. 
I'm glad you found me live too. Awesome. <laughs> oh, great. You see, Jeanette says, I knit and crochet and I like simple things fast and easy. I'm definitely a, a fan of fast and easy. So everything good? So this is going to be the first pattern that I released. This is the Constanza shawl. And like I said, it's at the testers. Most of them have finished already. But again, this is a, I mean, it's a decent size. It's not like a huge shawl. Some shawl patterns I've seen, it's like I'm never going to make that because it takes a sweater's quantity of yarn. And it's like I'd rather knit a sweater, not a shawl, if I'm going to use that much. But this is just one skein. And what was this? This was a blue face Lester and not, uh, so 75% BFL and 25% nylon blend. And this one was, um, the same, but 75, 25, it was superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. So they're sock yarns, you know? So those were that, but that's going to be the first one for sure. Uh, Lindy has a great question here. She's asking if I'm learning to knit, what size needles do you suggest I start with? Well, Lindy, I'm going to tell you like I taught my kids and like I know myself. Start with like an eight to 10 size needle, a US eight to 10, because if you start too small, you're going to get two rows in and be like, yeah, I'm over this. That's how I was. When I first started, I think I grabbed like a size three or four needle. And I was like, this takes forever. And for years I would say, oh, I hate knitting. It's so slow. Crochet is so much faster. For years and years and years and years, I said that. And then when I started seeing more and more knit garments, I'm like, my goodness, the stitch definition, the drape, the, 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 just the stitch quality. It just crochet can't give me that. So I was like, I'm going to learn how to knit. And then my friend Laura and I were at Camp Workroom Social years ago. What was it? 2017 or 28, 2017, 2018. We went to Camp Workroom Social up in upstate New York. And, uh, my friend Allison who owns knit one, a yarn shop in Chicago was doing like little, you know, they had like little tables with crafts at night that you could just do after the classes. And so my friend Laura and I were like, let's go to the knitting one. We're going to get into knitting. Let's go back and knit. And of course, half of the people there had on, I mean, these elaborate Icelandic sweaters. Well, people were talking like wool and Norwegian patterns and all this stuff. And I was like, well, uh, you, you people knit this stuff? And everybody, I mean, there was like a group of girls that all had the exact same sweater pattern, but in different colorways. It looked amazing. And I looked at Laura and I'm like, I need to knit a sweater. <laughs> we need to do this too. Um, and so that's kind of how I started getting into it. And I, I noticed that once I started with a size eight to 10 needle, it's just a mental thing where you kind of feel like you're making more progress because you're using a thicker yarn and working with bigger needles, right? So you don't want to start on like, I mean, you could start on this just because we're using bigger needles for this weight yarn, right? So for example, on my socks that I need to finish hand knitting the toe on, these, you can still see, I have my needle in here. These were made on nine inch circular needles and I wanna say they're US size one. I mean, they're bitty, bitty. It's like you're knitting with needles. I don't even wanna mess this up or pull this out of my stitches. Yeah, it's a US size one, 2.25 millimeters. I would not recommend you start on a pair of socks like this. You could start on a pair of socks with like a size eight or nine needle. And actually I have one here so I can show you how much bigger it is because I sign up for classes all the time with um, Vogue Knitting Live online. Let me grab this here with Vogue Knitting Live and just to like learn a new technique, practice a little something else, do some color work stuff. Like I just love dabbling in the craft, right? And so this was a sock that we started in a class and they were teaching us um, a different heel, different how to do the gusset part here. It's just like learning different techniques and how to knit them on two circulars. So you can still see I have my circulars in here. And so this is with was it DK or worsted? Yeah, this is a DK weight yarn. So a lot thicker, right, than this. So this much progress on a, on a thicker sock, say it was like a, say it's like a slipper for you to just be home in to keep your feet warm, right? It's kind of thick to wear. I, I would definitely not wear a sock like this in Florida. I don't need this that thick. But to learn the technique, we, it was a two-day class, and this is how much progress I made. 
So on a sock like this, it would take me a lot longer to get this far in the sock than I did, okay? So I would say eight to 10 is okay, like if you're working on a smaller project, like a scarf or a cowl or something. If you like bulky stuff, I say go for it and start with like a size US 13, 15, or 17. There's um, a cowl on Ravelry that you can find the pattern. It's called the Gaptastic Cowl. And it, it's all done in seed stitch. And it's a free PDF pattern that you can download from the designer there. And I made that one. And I think it has like, I can't remember if it was like a size 13 or a size 17 needle. It was huge. And it whipped up like that. So it kind of depends. If you're not into the super bulky... <laughs> Oh, Alex, you're on here. He says, OMG, my yarn. Yes, bro. <laughs> this is my friend, Alex Creates. He's Dominican too, you know. Um, and so this is the <laughs> one of the yarn cakes I bought from you, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is like an ombre one. So I started with all the, you can see how it's starting to fade into lighter, lighter. And then it works itself out to the lighter one. Oh my gosh, you're on here. Hey, bro. Okay. Uh, Rebecca says, you put the yarn around your neck or on a pin? the yarn around my neck. I'm not sure what, what you're asking. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, Angie's asking, what are those boards that your socks are on? These are called sock blockers. They just help like when you, uh, finish making your socks, whether by hand or by machine or whatever, you soak them, right? You roll them up in a towel and then I put them on here to dry so that these sock blockers give them the shape. These come in like plastic. Some people have them in metal and I just got these little thin. I mean, if I go like that, I'll snap it. They're just super thin. I don't know if it's birch board or what, but I had gotten these, um, as a gift. So I just had some and I put them on and I didn't think they were going to fit anyways. Cause I wear a woman's size 11 shoe sock size too. So uh, they're kind of a little bit baggy, but whatever. It helps to get the idea across and you can see the full sock. So they sell them in different sizes, obviously. So people that knit a lot of socks, especially for gifts, will have them like kid size, small, medium, large, whatever. Um, but you can see these socks. I took a class with my friend Jana from Pearl Together. So you can find her on YouTube under P-U-R-L, Pearl, like knit and pearl, together. Uh, and she taught a class that we signed up for because I'm on her Patreon. I'm one of her patrons. Uh, and we signed up for a knitting class. I can't remember how many weeks long it was, but we met like live on Zoom and she helped us take all the measurements of our foot and we custom designed the recipe formula to make the socks be exactly what we wanted for our foot. And so that's why you can see that this is a little bit bigger because this was custom custom, like super custom for my feet, but they are so cute. Okay, so that is that. And so that's what the sock blocker looks like. It has a little hole on top. You can hang them up, but you can find these anywhere if you look online for sock blockers. Uh, you can find custom ones where people do all kinds of fun wood lasering stuff, kind of like, <laughs> kind of like how these are, but with your name or logo or whatever. And you can find those on Etsy. I've seen people sell like custom made ones. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, H Bailey says around the neck. You mean the yarn, like when you're actually knitting? Yeah, that's like Portuguese style. And there's another one where people use like a straight needle and they put it under their arm or up against the belt. Yeah, I don't do all of that. I just mostly use circular needles and just knit. Okay. Uh, oh, thanks, Donna. She said, you've always made me smile or laugh, Vanessa, ever since I started watching your sewing tutorial seven years ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little kooky. Oh, and I talk very fast. So if you don't like fast talkers, sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. So I see y'all talking about that Portuguese knitting. Um, I think this is Michelle is saying, I prefer to knit socks two at a time and magic loop. Oh my gosh. There's so many different ways to knit socks. I've seen, I've heard, I've taken classes where people tell you all about the different ones so far. My favorite way to hand knit is the nine inch circulars. And I have really large hands. I didn't think I was going to be able to deal with these baby, baby nine inch circs. And at first it does like cramp up and you're like, you never going to get past the, the ribbing. But, um, I feel like after a sock or two, your hands just kind of get accustomed to it. And I like that. I don't have to be pulling that magic loop cord, sliding things over, doing anything. You are literally just going that super small circumference around and around and around. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. So sock blockers, if you're looking for them, just do a quick Google search or just go straight to Etsy and type in sock blockers, uh, wood, plastic and metal ones. You can find them online too. 
Lizette says her too, nine inch cirques for the win. And you know, this, this one wasn't bad. This was a bigger, so I had uh, two interchangeable needle sets for the larger size needle because this was that DK yarn. These needles are 4.5 millimeters. So they're US size seven. And I liked it. The two cirques were okay once you get beyond this clankety clank clank that's swinging all around and kind of in your way. But as far as picking up and starting, it was pretty easy. But I just feel like the nine inch cirques, it's cuter, smaller, just more compact. My project bags for those are not even a medium, like a teensy little bag and I can take socks on the go. Oh, you see, and Barb says she prefers double pointed needles. I can't mess with double pointed needles, Barb, because I drop all the stitches. <laughs> so I need something a little bit more contained. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I know a lot of people that do that or some people use magic loop for the majority of the sock But when they get to the heel on the toe, they will swap out to DPNs. So I mean there's so many Combinations, I think one of my friends said she knits them on three um, Three circulars. I don't know. There's like so many different ways Okay Okay, awesome. Well, thank you everybody. I think that's going to be it. I shared quite a bit of stuff and I'm curious to hear your feedback. So if you're on the email list, remember that we will be entering you in a giveaway this weekend to get a box of goodies, uh, meaning knitting stuff, crochet stuff, yarn and notions. And then uh, we will reach out next week with a feedback survey so we can get your input so that as we continue to grow this yarn side of our business for crochet, knitting, spinning and all that fiber goodness, uh, we can be putting together with my team all the different things that we want to put, you know, put out for you all. Okay, so thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. I love the, ta the talk about needles. Um, maybe I should do a video on that, but we'll see. I think for the next fr uh, Fiber Friday, I'm going to have a ton of content because it's going to be the first Friday in November, um, and I'm hoping to have some more news for you all because we have another little secret project that we're working on behind the scenes. Okay. All right. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, if you're one of my sewing or quilting peeps, I will see you next week for Whip Wednesday. And if not, I will see you back here on the first Friday of November, 7 p.m. Eastern. Crafty Gemini Facebook page and the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. Thanks everybody for tuning in today. I appreciate your time and the chat comments and questions and have a great weekend. Bye.